have a quorum, so that's good. Um, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Tuesday, January 11th FinCom meeting. Uh, this evening, we will be getting a finance director's update uh, from Alicia. Uh, we'll discuss the FY budget um, and get right into public input, member input minutes and we will adjourn so um before we get into too much uh, of the update everybody i'm hoping everybody received the um aggressive schedule over the next few weeks a uh, couple last minute changes i think for the better um chairman de coast uh, had requested that we actually use the police station uh for the hybrid model just in case we have uh more more people um, show up for the boards for us um, between us and select board. If we all showed up, we, we could spread out those tables a little bit, probably a little easier like we do on that Saturday. Um, and other than that, everything else will pretty much run the same. Um, two nights, right? Alicia, 18th and the 25th of Correct. briefings. Um, and then the Saturday, the four department, big departments, and then we will meet after lunch and hopefully come out of there with a budget balanced, which hopefully this year doesn't look as complicated as previous years. So I'm actually excited. <laughs> um, not to mean that there's not a lot to it, that's for sure. But, um, so we'll get into, uh, we'll let Alicia get into her, her briefing and her updates, and then we, we can talk a little bit more about the, the next few weeks. And a couple of recent things that came in with schools um, that I just got. I don't know, Alicia, if you just got some. Let me see. Yeah, I, I don't know if you if you guys um, remember uh, several several weeks ago, right before Christmas, I met with schools. Um, yeah. They gave. Actually, I, I almost I, I almost fainted when they came in with their number. <laughs> Uh, historically low, um, you know, it also obviously due to a lot of the uh, funding they've been getting in aid, but um, we'll talk a little bit about that. If Alicia, you don't see it, I have those numbers. I can even open with that if we want. Yeah, no, that would be great because I don't have those. I've requested them. Okay. Yeah, it looks like, uh, let's see if I can... Well, I, I have I actually for some reason it's only showing up on my phone right now but that's okay so after discussing with uh sitting in that meeting and then finally they actually sent us an email today confirming what we talked about um their request for FY23 is 460,247 for a total FY 2023 school budget of 23 million fifty thousand two hundred and forty seven dollars that represents a two percent increase over the fy 22 approved school appropriation well actually 2.05 is what my math came out to but two percent um and the number that you if you haven't received your um, budget report books yet haven't come down and got those you can see the one that alicia gave you but uh that actually had them at nine hundred and twenty thousand. so which was still a very fair number at 4.1%. Um, you know, a few of you guys that have been around, I know <laughs> you're aware what that budget can do. And it, it can, it's come up into the, you know, mid million, 1.345 range. So this was really good news. Um, they had a lot of circuit breaker money, um, sped reimbursement. A lot of numbers came way down for them that they projected. So it was really all good news. I will say um, that something we'll have to think about is that $450,000 feasibility study that's going to be happening with Shaker Lane. So I'll let Alicia talk a little bit about that. Um, and that's really it. So that was probably the best news I've ever heard from a school budget for an increase. I mean, and, you know, they were cautiously saying that this is a blip on a radar. So um, if anyone has any questions about that, um, I, what we're doing with that money, if you're wondering where, um, where, where we're, we're putting some of this money, it's going to go into a, is it a stabilization fund we're putting this in? Where would it, Correct. 
The school yeah. building stabilization fund, yes. Yeah, so and that's still up for a conversation with, with everyone here. Um, I had talked about if there was another need that maybe was more pressing, uh, but knowing that that Shaker Lane project's coming down the road either within the next fiscal year or right soon after, it's something, uh, a $450,000 um, bill would be tough, tough not to crack if we had to do it without preparing for it. And this, this year will kind of help us get ahead of that if that's what we decide to use it for. Um, but maybe there are some other things that we might consider. I'm, you know, so we're open to ideas on that. Um, Gary, how much in one-time funds are they using this year? Do I have that number? Question. I don't know if you have that number, Alicia. Do you? Steve, are you talking about us, sir? Are you talking about the 450 to Shaker Lane or what they're using to reduce their budget? Oh, the, the, the money they've got from the Fed government? That's uh, their two or three. Yep. Yeah. I've asked them for a presentation, Steve, twice. So as soon as I get it, I'd be happy to provide that to you. Because again, they're using that this year to offset this increase. Right. That doubles the problem next year. So. Yeah, there's going to be, obviously, they'll be back on a, a line of one point whatever million probably requests next year, right? Um, we're going into a contract year, I think, with them as well, the schools and everything. So uh, we'll see what how all the CBAs play out here. But um, yeah, they were very, they, they were pretty adamant telling us this was a a very large abnormality that will not continue. Obviously, they they, they used all, they they received quite a bit of funding for this in, this year. So, um, but it's still good news one way or another. It's still money that we um, hopefully can. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, Alicia. Yeah. When you do get in touch with them about this, yes, yes, yeah, so we'll, uh, try and get some email. try and get some idea of what they're spending it on. Yes. Yeah, and they're going to be. They're going to. We're going to have them in front of us also on that Saturday because I, I think that's important. And that some of these questions they can probably answer right there. And then if we can't get answers before we have them in person again, um, I think that's. It's really all I had with that. We can let's get into the rest of the Alicia's information. We can talk more about this as as we get into it. I haven't seen their capital requests yet either. I, I'm assuming, I know there was talk of a high school roof. <coughs> so much. All right. Okay, we're gonna get right into the director update. Today, we're gonna go over the 2023 uh, budget briefing and then a capital briefing after that. So if you can see my screen, I'm showing you the 23 versus the 22 budget. So you can just, kind of eyed some of the variances over, you know, top level $5 million between the two and 8.78% increase in revenue. Then you can see your total appropriation and expenses, 4.1 million, which we know is actually going to get reduced by the school appropriation. As you can see that 924.93 variance, that 4.07% is actually reduced down to 2.05. And then there's the total expenditures with a net budget variance of 485, 659. So on this slide, I, I highlighted the uh, deficit of that 45,659, which is going down. And also, we have not really planned for our ARPA money, our Mayor can Rescue Plan Act. Um, we suggested the town use between three and 300 and 400,000 this year, probably another three to 400,000 next year, using um, the losses on the revenue loss side. So far, one police officer has been authorized to be funded using ARPA beginning January 2022. Additional staffing requests are the largest driver of the proposed fiscal year 23 budget. And the pre-pandemic department requests were in line to be funded based on the growth of the town before the pandemic hit. And these positions can provide efficient operations, provide better service levels, and address challenges that are coming as our community is growing. This slide shows the budgetary staffing requests. <clears throat> The first one being mine, 
um, the financial analyst I've asked for to support financial operations and the finance office, an upgrade to the assistant treasurer position for $3,150, a human resource administrative assistant position to support their payroll and benefits for $52,493, an assistant conservation agent as a part of the land use department, a uh, new department that has been created, uh, multiple promotional adjustments within the land use department, the two additional officers, uh, one started January 22, that's a typo that says 21, we will correct that, um, a fire prevention officer, a board of health health agent to do in-house septic and restaurant inspections instead of outsourcing, uh, elder and human services social worker, a teen librarian, uh, facilities director, and a local inspector. And here we're going to just go over revenues, which are going out approximately 8.8% over fiscal 22 or $5 million. Our levy limits at 46,792,366. Undesignated fund balance or free cash is going to be 5306,811. The largest increase is primarily due to the ultra conservative budgeting uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic. So we just scaled back our estimations to be extra conservative and that really bolstered up um, because our local receipts came in much higher than what we expected them to. Um, in accordance with the town's financial policies, the funds are being dedicated to long-term liabilities and capital needs such as OPEB and pension. State aid is unknown at this time, so we used a really modest increase based on strong numbers for the state. Our other available funds to transfer are from the ambulance for 525000 plus additional offset items from bond premiums under the pre-modernization accounting rules. And local receipts, we did a trend analysis. Um, we increased them close to 20% or 620000 and we still made it quite conservative. Expenses, this is gonna change because our projections at a 10 plus increase, but now that I know the schools are changed, we'll, we'll give you an updated uh, new briefing. Town operations up 8.8% or 1.16. School operations no longer 4.1 or 920, now 2.05 and 460, 247. Uh, tech schools were level funded, but they may increase depending on enrollment. Other charges, facilities, and infrastructures. There's additional utility costs when it comes to the library. We're not really sure yet. And proposed uh, facilities manager position that's on the table. Debt service is similar to fiscal year 22. It includes refinance debt. Thank you, Sean, which reduced our debt by 43033 or 1.2%. And funds for short-term notes associated with the community center will be coming. Uh, employee benefits increased 13.5% or 1 million. 355, 395, primarily due to our additional funding to supplemental pension and OPEB liabilities. And benefit costs are still to be determined. We used an 8% uh, average because that's usually the annual insurance average of how insurance rates increase. So we thought that was fairly conservative. And we should have the real rates in February or March. And our state assessments are to be determined. So we moderately adjusted them to correlate with the state aid change because that's really how it works. As state aid goes up, our assessments go up. Uh, overlay still has a strong fund balance, but we are suggesting leaving it as is as the assessor has um, open ATB cases that she's still working on. So for our fiscal 23 budget briefing wrap up, we're in a really good budgetary shape, actually even better than what I have for tonight. Uh, we've not fully dedicated our ARPA funds, but should begin dedication as part of the budget process as the funds ends 12 31 24 for public sector revenue loss and restoration of government services. Um, ARPA for sewer, water, and broadband construction ends 12 31 26 as long as the funds are obligated by 12 31 24. The U.S. Treasury released a final rule, very exciting, on January 6, and it actually works very, very well for us. It allows a standard allowance up to 10 million in aggregate, not to exceed your award amount during the program to replace lost public sector revenue to provide government services to the pandemic. What does this mean for Littleton? That means I don't have to do a huge lengthy revenue loss calculation like they said originally in their interim final rule. And it provides you additional flexibility on how you wanna use that money. So we look forward to working collaboratively with the boards, departments and public on how to best use the ARPA funding in conjunction with the budget. Any questions on the budget? 
Hey, Alicia, nice um, overview on that. Can you go back to the um, the headcount yep, page? Yep. I have a question. So looks like we're um, adding a, a health agent. Am I reading that correct? You are reading that correct. Have we done the math to see what the cost of onboarding the new employee versus continuing the path that we've been on uh, and what that, what that difference is between the I two? I know that, I believe Ed is in, hold on one second. I think Ed did that analysis, right, Alicia? Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So I'm going to promote him to panelists and let him speak on that. Okay. Thank you. I didn't know he was here. <laughs> He's hiding. <laughs> okay, Ed, you should be able to speak. Don't hear him yet. Can you folks hear me? I'm on my phone. That was You're good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to turn down the other computer because I'm watching the Affordable Housing Trust meeting as well. <laughs> Double dipping in. Well, a lot to get done this time of year. Um, so I did run the numbers initially when we proposed this. And not only did I project that we would um, be able to support and generate revenue to fund the position, but also be able to add into the, um, well, obviously it all goes to the general fund, but we could certainly support the position with uh, permit fees, plan review, um, and other other costs associated with health inspections. And, and you don't uh, foresee, like, if, if all of a sudden building stops and uh, all these permits go down, um, I know we're having some great years here with, with all the building that's going on, but if that happens, would there be a, a deficit at that point or would it, would there not be, are we in good shape? We're in good shape where, where we could potentially see a deficit is with the way public health um, board of health and public health is moving in the future, especially since we've gone through this pandemic, um, the health services side of things, meaning the long-term look at uh, public health nurses or even meet, needing some type of, pandemic specialist or, or any healthy, you know, somebody beyond what we're looking for originally, we could see a deficit in the future, but right now we can certainly carry for the next few years. I don't see, I don't see an issue with it unless we needed to upgrade the position. So do you think there's a savings here then, Ed? Yeah, I absolutely do. The, the 30 plus, I think it's 30,000 for the Neshoba Associate Boards of Health. Um, and then an additional 9,000 for nursing services. You know, we pull that 39,000 into a salary and offset it with the permitting and else we're conservatively saying that we're going to generate a hundred thousand dollar in revenue, um, coming in. So if the, if the construction drops off where we've been falling short is the restaurant inspections, which in any other city or town where I've worked, the inspections are supposed to happen quarterly mm -hmm. right now Littleton does them yearly so when we hit the mark that set the standard by the state for the quarterly inspections to make sure that the serve safe is occurring um, and if we follow the practice that i've generated which is minimum of a hundred dollars per inspection because let's face it you can't send somebody out the door anymore for gas fuel <laughs> benefits and everything else right. to not pay a hundred dollars so <clears throat> we can make it so that it's it's a positive number Okay. And then the, the incremental salary, Alicia, is that including OPEB or not? The, what is your question? The incremental salary number with that position, is that including uh, benefits? No. That's without, that, that number that I have on your screen is without benefits. So does that change anything, Ed, if we add in the benefit cost on top of that? Or no, the benefits are going to be in the budget already for the. If we edit the position, then we'll we'll add in what what we would estimate. I believe, Sean, for insurance, do we add in what we believe we're adding for positions? Yeah, yeah so there so there's additional um, plans in there, you know, for you know reserve purposes and new employees. So if someone become turns 26 and becomes benefits eligible or have a qualifying event, we do provide um, some, you know, 
insurance for our insurance account pretty much. So, um, yeah, so these positions have been factored into um, the uh, employee benefit budget. So, Greg, you're specifically talking to historically, you've seen a number here, right? Attached to that, what it's actually costing the town. Correct. Yeah, not just the salary that's being paid to the employee, but the total cost of the position. Uh, and just, you know, want to make sure that, you know, we're getting enough revenue from, and I'm sure Ed's doing a great job with this, but getting enough revenue to justify the position so that we're not looking at this a year or two years later and saying, oh, well, we didn't have enough permits that year. And so now we've got to fund a, a position because we didn't have enough money there. Yeah. And, and Greg, to that, um, I think for health insurance, for a family plan, you're probably looking 15 to 20,000 for a town, town cost, depending on, um, you know, rate, where rates go. So um, that's something we can include in the future there. OPEB and pension costs are a little bit harder to um, parse out, but at least from, from a pure health insurance standpoint, that's, that's where we'd likely be at for that. Yeah, we used to do that. Um, I know years ago, we would look at what the, the cost of onboarding the, the new employee was as a whole, not just mm -hmm. the salary, but everything. So we had a better idea. And also that we were planning for it from an insurance perspective, right? To make sure that we had, we're not shortfalling on the insurance to cover everything down the road as, you know, employees, as you said, they get the 26 years and they leave or what have you, then you know, now we're paying two salaries essentially. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, good. Ed, when does the contract with Neshoba end? The final day of the fiscal year. Timing might work out if this happens. <laughs> well, we still have to, we'd have to hire and everything. We have to find somebody with the qualifications for this. I mean, I, I have no idea what the, the feel for that is. This, this type of work, what's out there, right? <laughs> I presented the job description to the select board last night. It's going to be reviewed by the board of health uh, tomorrow night. Um, and if they are willing to, if they are happy with it, then it'll be uh, sent back to the select board for approval. Um, the, the select board's also in process of putting together the personnel advisory committee so that they can grade and then put a rate on the position. Um, I've always proposed it as a 11 in the mid eighties. Um, so it's a health agent. It's not a health director. Health director goes up, you know, tops over a hundred. So um, this is somebody we're hoping to bring in that can get some direction. We're hoping that we have, we do have a retired health agent here in town that has offered uh, his services um, for training. Should we not have the services of Neshoba to, to onboard the individual? Oh, to bridge the gap. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully there's no gap. Hopefully they're, they're on board, you know, I discussed it with the select board last night that maybe we can bring them in if we're able to hire post and hire before the end of uh, this fiscal year and find a way to fund it, then we can um, get some overlap through the show. So we'd have to utilize ARPA funds for in that. Um, yeah. I can say that, you know, with the, this year, the, the, the building department itself on a, because I haven't been able to do the fiscal budget hasn't ended this year, so I can't calculate it. So I just did a calendar budget. Um, and we're up from last year to this year over 200000 with the permit fee increases. Have we talked about to Neshober about possibly doing it month by month in case we don't find somebody? Yeah, so in my last Board of Health meeting, um, I spoke. we spoke to that. The, uh, the board members were actually asking um, Neshoba that question, and... Jim's answer was you're all in or you're all out really is how they look at it. There's no a la carte on there. It's, there's no selection for a la carte services. You, you, you mentioned uh, nursing services that we would get. How are we going to supplement that? Uh, so the, the per, you know, we're looking at a per diem um, or a part-time position. Um, I'm hoping that we can tap somebody that's already in the services of the town, maybe over at the schools. Um, if not, there are lots of, of nurses that, that take on part-time roles such as this. 
in every other town that I've worked in, they've come from, you know, all sorts of backgrounds, whether it's an ER nurse or whether it's a, a you know, home health care service nurse. So is, is that cost in your budget somewhere? Ed? Um, so I did discuss it with um, Liz over at EHS and, you know, we both carried a, a number for it. Um, so I think you're going to see it in two budgets just so we both had it covered. Okay. And what about the mental health services they provided? Is that was that through Neshoba too? Uh, no, there was uh, See a New Sun. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Ha- I don't have. I don't have the health budget in front of me, but I know there was two or three. One we actually dropped last year because they would not respond to us on, you know, how much services, what services did they provide that past fiscal year? We got no response, so we didn't uh, send out their final payment a year ago. Cheryl was here at the time. Okay. Um, Any other questions uh, for Mr. Mullen? No, I'm I'm good, Gary. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for your time, Ed. Yeah, no problem. Glad I signed it. Now I got to go play cornhole in the cornhole league at Park and Rec. <laughs> well, at least it's not outside. Right. Okay. Hey, uh, Alicia, I, I had one on, on a different kind of just on, on the, the facilities coordinator, uh, you know, facilities manager. I, I guess I'm just curious on that one, right? Is, yep. you know, is it, in, in years past, we talked about that being, you know, potentially something we explore doing with the schools as well, right? I mean, we, you know, went from having that role to a maintenance supervisor and, and now back to, to having both. So I guess I'm just curious, you know, is, do we explore or is this person responsible for kind of both sides of the house or is it just the town buildings? And, you know, do we explore what, you know, what we could do collaboratively with the, with the school for that? I believe they would be working in collaboration with the town administrator's office and the schools on all the buildings. Yeah, that was the okay. discussion I, I remember. Uh, the last discussion that I heard was that would be um, a position that also managed the facility, that those facilities as well. Uh, we're doing, okay. Yeah, all, all the municipal buildings in town. Gary, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, I, my recollection also is that we had to go to the state to get a, a special approval so that the individual, um, should they be hired, uh, could serve both the town and the schools. Um, so we went through that in 18 or 19, it got approved, and then the funding got cut due to COVID for the position. Um, and since I was hired, I've I've been <laughs> picking up a lot of those scraps and, and running around. I know Steve Mark does a lot of the work too, and we both have a lot of other things that we should be focusing on. So even last night at the select board meeting, they had me fixing the heat. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. I forgot that falls onto you. <laughs> Shouldn't I let you go uh, too early? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it usually falls on IT, right? And where's Nancy? <laughs> they do a lot as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on the staffing requests? Uh, <coughs> I'm just trying to look this over. I, I, I know a little bit about the elder and human services. Um, It says social worker. That's really an outreach uh, coordinator position for uh, health and elder. (coughs) I know just some of the work that they've had to do over the holiday holidays and their increased workload um, in the COE COA meeting earlier this week, just looking at the scale of the amount of outreach that that department has to do now um, with individuals, both, you know, under the age of 60 and over the age of 60 is, it's increased immensely. So that position is really working um, with that, that outreach team uh, to, to assist in that, in that regard. So um, the only other ones, obviously, I, I know the fire prevention officer was also up a couple of years ago. Um, it's currently a dual had a thing with the deputy, correct? historically in Littleton, I guess. Um, and then, uh, 
everything else I think is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I think we all expected something from the library with the new, <laughs> the new facility. I know they, it, it kind of didn't get talked about much <laughs> during the, before the library was built, but I think we all kind of expected um, they were going to need some type of uh, assistance there, but that's not going to end up being a um, benefit eligible anyway, because they're already benefit eligible. Is that correct? Correct. So. And yet, while you're still here, what about the conservation agent? Uh, again, that position was funded in 20 and then cut. Um, the job description was approved and we're hoping to, uh, with the reorganization that was proposed and voted at town meeting, because uh, the other one that I'm not seeing on there is the uh, assistant planner. Um, the, the conservation agent is a part-time benefit eligible position and the assistant planner we're also looking for is a um, full-time position. If I remember back then, Amy was talking about cutting her hours. Is she still talking about that? Yeah, she would trust. She's 25 now. I think she would go to 20 and the other individual would go to 20. Um, that's my recollection. Well, All right. Any other questions? All right. I think that's it for that. Thank you, Ed. You bet. All right, now I'm gonna bring us to our new 10 year capital improvement plan. We have 96,268,344 in 10 year capital requests. And here this little graph just breaks down the different funding sources. So about 79.7 in bond and grants, 9.4 in free cash, general fund operations grants and CPC funding of 262,000, gift funds of 90,000, grants and revolving of 2.3 million, paid cable funding of 484,000, trust funds and CPC requests of another 144,300, a water enterprise fund of quarter million, senior center stabilization, 3 million, and school building stabilization, 450,000. Then I broke it down by department by year. So you could see how much they're requesting per year by department. And then you can see the total by year. So 23 is 12.2 million, 24, 8.193 million, 25, 2.1, 26, 4.3, 27, 31.8. That would be the Shaker Lane building coming in 27, 28, 2.6. 29, 4.3, 30 is 27.7. That's 27 million is a PRCE. They want a whole community center with a pool. That's what that 27 million is. 2031, 1 million 439 and 2032, 1.283. So with the town of Littleton's free cash was certified at 9.428814 on October 25th. And the reason it was so high, as we said, was due to the extra high conservative estimation of local receipts. Per the Town of Littleton's financial policy, we have to maintain at least 5% of the operating budget in free cash for 3862917 as free cash reserves. We can use up to 2.5% of free cash for a capital plan or 1287639 And for fiscal year 23, the uh, allocations were made in conformance with the Town of Littleton's financial policies, a million twenty-eight five fifty-three for fiscal year twenty-three free cash uh, capital plan projects, two fifty-nine zero eighty-six to capital stabilization, another one point three two two to capital stabilization, five hundred to debt exclusion stabilization, one hundred and fifty to general stabilization, a million to the senior center stabilization fund, four hundred and fifty to that newly proposed school building stabilization fund for the feasibility for study for uh, Shaker Lane School. And another 855-652, which is another suppl second supplemental payment, which is 650 to the OPEB and 202-562 to the pension. Any questions on this slide? Yeah. What are the two amounts for capital stabilization? 259? 
259,086 and, and 1,322,606. Okay. And if we don't wind up spending the full million dollars, million oh twenty eight. For, um, for free cash? Yeah, would you recommend stabilization for that also? Yes. Okay. Um, hey, Alicia, this is kind of uh, looking at the bottom bullet there with regards to um, pension, the 200000 mm -hmm. Have you done any roadmap work looking further out to see what our obligations could look like uh, based on what we have for employees uh, that, that could be potentially retiring and looking at replacement costs and that, that kind of stuff looking, you know, out I'm going to hand that answer off to Sean, because I know that Sean recently went to a meeting on our pension and OPEB recently. Okay. He's really spearheaded a lot of this. Yeah. So um, as we're part of the uh, Middlesex County retirement system, <laughs> um, the we don't have total control of, of everything, but I do know that based on how we've advanced fund advanced funded um, the pension, our costs down the road will significantly drop. Um, right now, projections are um, from an assessment standpoint going to increase by six and a half percent for um, the next. I think five to seven years or so, and then taper off to 4% um, annually based on um, the actuarial assumptions that um, we have currently. I think the, the overall um, pension system is scheduled to be funded, fully funded at um, 2037, um, three years prior to the state law requirement under 32. Um, but um, I know that with the advanced funding and, and the approach and the returns that um, I just saw from, from that meeting about a month ago, um, we're around like 30%. So when we have additional funds in the market, we get additional credit um, towards our pen pension funded ratio. I think, I think part of the reason why you see it around um, 60% is because the experiences on the last um, on the last valuation reflected some more uh, downturn in the market while we had additional funds, but um, they tend to get smoothed out every over a four year period. So um, I'd, I'd assume that would go um, be pretty favorable going forward, and then um, ideally by doing this, we'll, we could just cover the normal cost or the annual cost of providing. Um, the retirement benefits. So, Greg, uh, one of the things that, and this leads into your other question that you asked, and I noticed this when um, I was looking through the book, I sent Sean a, an email about it, is our funded ratio has actually gone down a bit. It took a little dip this past time, even though we're paying more. And what Sean said, was our experience so the way Middlesex works is they have assumptions for the county so they're saying wages are going to increase by four percent and this is you know the, the head count that you have and you're going to have this many people retire and this many people come on board type of thing our experience level to the last valuation report was higher than those assumptions were so our salary levels were higher. So our liability got higher. And the only reason why our assessment didn't go through the roof is because we had prepaid so much money. Without that, we would have seen a huge increase in this line. So it's, it's helping in the short term because of the staffing turnovers that we've had. I mean, the people that have left is certainly being replaced by higher salary people. We're adding to staff. There's a lot more positions in the town than there were even when I left the town. And we've hired quite a bit of people. 
So these are the things that, that keep escalating for both pension and OPEB and making these extra payments is going to smooth things out in, in the long run. So it, it's still a great idea. We just have to be careful about adding so many people and just be conservative in what we're doing and the approach we're taking because it can bite us in the long run. So, Yeah, yeah Steve, I mean, you're right on with that. And that's kind of where my head was going is I, I know that that's kind of an expanding um, need as, as more and more employees come through the town, right? I mean, we have more and more obligation to people who are living longer. So we're paying for pensions longer and things like that. So we're not planning for that long-term I mean, long-term, let's, let's say mid-range term, like five to 10 years out, what our obligation might be. It might, to your point, might come back to haunt us. So I know that's something yeah. that we did quite a bit in the past where we were, were trying to stay on top of that. So just a Yeah, that's a good point, Greg, right? To really look at the fully loaded cost of an employee. I mean, you know, you, I, at work, I'm always looking at, you know, you're looking at the benefits and, and things like that, right? But I mean, I think the, the for, for us here, the OPAB and the pension stuff are things that are probably a little, you know, harder to forecast and might not be thought about, but but for sure it affects the big time, especially with the pension. I mean, pension assessment goes up six and a half percent a year, I think, right? So it's a it's a big it's a big escalator every year, regardless of what we do. Well, and you could have, you know, a position where you have a couple of people that retired from that same position and you're paying that pension on those two people that retired. Yeah. And you got the you got the Plus, employee uh, that's in the position yeah. that currently holds it. So you know, your cost for that position becomes uh, a lot more uh, the longer people live and the younger people retire, right? So it's just something that... So, and I'll just jump in real quick. So comparatively, I think um, obviously good things to think about. And um, I, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but I think we're one of the only towns to fund um, those two long-term liabilities as aggressively as this. Yeah. So, you know, in other, in other communities, you're saying, all right, with that free cash of, you know, 855,000, we're going to hire five teachers and four laborers and just to meet our current service demand. So by being disciplined and using those funds for not, you know, for not for one-time expenses, granted we do them every year, but they're not going to come back to bite us on that stuff. So. I think that sort of discipline, I know when I'm on bond rating calls, they're blown away by that stuff because of yeah. the systems in place. So it really helps when we, to have that financial flexibility, especially with you know things like a senior center coming up, a sewer project and those sort of things that are going to be big tickets out there. So, um, but yeah, no, I think having a holistic approach to employee cost might be something that, um, um, would help, especially with any new ads and the growth of the town. So we'll work on getting that in there. Yeah, and it looks like it's 2019 data, Sean, right? But I mean, we're at 61% funded versus 46 in the system, right? So we're 15 points ahead of of the average, I guess. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, Sean, what, I mean, if you went to those meetings, the, the, the law, I guess we're calling it a law that states it has to be funded by 2040, <clears throat> correct? What's, what happens to these towns that there's no way they're going to make it? Um, that's a good <laughs> question. Um, I'm sure what the state will do is just say, all right, you have until 2050, but I'm just yeah. being kind of sarcastic there. But I think, I, I mean, honestly, you just end up in a position where you have to have big catch-up years, whereas, you yeah. know, our, you know, annual assessment should be more reflective of the normal or annual cost. Yeah the system just to keep uh keep level so you know, just not to interrupt you sean quincy did something really different they actually borrowed for their pension so they got Ooh. special legislation years ago and because the rates are so low they borrowed for their pension so that they're basing their payments on a fixed schedule so they don't have to worry about the dips and lulls that we're worrying about in our return, whether we're going to hit that 7.5 or 7.25, they have a fixed schedule. So I thought that was interesting. I've been following the Quincy CFO just because it's not normal and not how anybody else does it. But I just thought it was interesting. So I figured I'd share. Wouldn't that impact bond ratings too? 
Yes. Yeah. So they yes. it does absolutely. So I, and how is that? Have you followed it on the Quincy side? Is you know they're borrowing to pay for pensions? Has that impacted their bond rating significantly, or have you as, looked at as that of right all? now? No, the way that they did it, it did not. Um, they have quite an economic guru working in there, <laughs> working on that worked on this with several others to get this done. But I just I've been watching it only because it's so different, and I've never seen a municipality do that. Yeah. And they probably have their own pension system, though, Alicia, right? Correct. Yes, because right. I came uh, from my own right. right. We're not so different. We're in a, a different kind of way that they are. And with middle sex, there's... More than one system in there. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how many Multiple. different different towns are in middle sex. And like 30 or 40 on there. Yeah. yeah, at least, plus little water districts. And yeah, there's tons of them. To get back to your other point thing, pension systems, they're regulated by PERAC pretty frequently. Um, Every year. Keep on top of, of the performance of the system and how well they're going to meet um, their bogey for whatever year that is. And they try and keep their discount rates in line. So th there's a lot of oversight on pension systems and Middlesex is just one of the, the players there. And I, I think we're, we're fine as, as far as what we're doing. I think you're doing way better than fine, Steve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> way better. So a lot of systems haven't even put money into OPEB or very little because they're waiting for their pension payments to fall off before they even start applying it. And uh, you've been applying it all along. So kudos. Yeah. I remember going to a couple of MMA meetings, uh, financial meetings where, you know, we were talking about that. that's something that we were doing years ago and towns, a lot of towns to your point, Alicia, a lot of towns aren't doing that. They're not funding it or they're underfunding or barely funding. It. You know, it's like, they're kind of surprised that we're overfunding it. So um, good place to be just, I guess I just get nervous a little bit looking long-term that we don't lose sight of that so that it doesn't sneak up on us. And all of a sudden we've got this big nut that we have to worry about because, you know, we kind of lost sight of it, but it sounds like you guys are on it. So all good. Yeah. I think that we're, we're looking at this hiring um, this year, FY 23. It's, it's really almost two and a half years worth of hiring that we've fallen behind on. Right. So it, it's, it is playing a little catch up, which doesn't mean we have to go crazy, but I, and that's, I, that's why I think it's good. Everybody's asking questions on each position individually and what it's going to do and how it's going to help. That's important. Um, and we'll get another, you know, points of view when, when the select board is presented this with us as well, right. From the department head. So I think um, just something to think about though, when we're, you know, come Saturday when we're getting down to, we have to see what we're going to fund. Um, and the thought process is always, well, just because we have the money, we don't have to spend it. Right. Um, that becomes real apparent in, in those meetings with the select board when we're really scrutinizing each position and each department. Um, so just kind of keep in your mind what, what you hear from the department heads and, why the positions are important. And so we, we kind of develop our own, I guess, argument for whatever we're, <laughs> whatever we're seeing or what, whatever we're looking at, right? But I didn't see any outlandish request in there. I think some of the, it's, it, it's you know, I, I, but I also, I, I'm not sitting here and putting it next to the select boards goals either so i don't know if there's some of that that's going to play into this politically on some of these positions or not but from a strictly financial standpoint i i think we're in a really good position to get these hirings that are obviously needed and they some of them have been needed for a few years now um to do it this year because every year is not going to be like this but we're going to have this opportunity for sure and we've all sat on a board where we said we can't hire this we can't hire that because we don't have the money so just yeah and you make a great point gary i mean yeah this is a couple of years worth of uh, hirings that we've kind of put on ice right and some of these we pre approved two three years ago whatever the timeline was but um 
it, it just looks on paper like there's a lot of full time positions. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, normally we you know we might have one or two a year, you know, something like that. But uh, so you got seven full time full benefit positions here. It's like yeah. wow, on, you know. Yep. Great. Any other questions on this, or Alicia, do you have any more to, to add to this? Um, on the next slide, all I did was break down the twelve point two million. Oh yeah. based on the funding sources with the only debt being proposed for the senior center. And Sorry about I see all the little emails. The, the estimated cost of that was 10 million from what I saw? Yes. yes. What you had on that sheet? And that was that above and beyond the three million, or is that included? That's what the three million included. So the three million from stabilization and seven point three in bond. Okay. Any questions on this? Then you had another. If you go back one slide or two sure. slides, one slide, one slide. So there's another million we're proposing to put to the senior center stabilization. So that would make it four million. Right? Yep. So we're down to six million bond. Um we haven't even got a cost yet. This is a big estimate, right? <laughs> yeah. I I think it I thought it was around like um ten million for construction and then you know, a mill for design, something like that. But we haven't, they haven't finished the feasibility piece yet, but I think that was, uh, that was the high level guesstimate, I, I suppose. Okay. And looking at their timeline, I, I think we're, look, the senior center timeline, um, it looks like this month is supposed to be getting some of those numbers it should be coming in. So hopefully by the end of the month, we have, have some of that. When I got a late email tonight to um, legal fees are going up slightly, so I need to do an analysis on that on the legal rates to see how that's going to affect the legal budget. So that may change as well. That okay. may go up slightly. Yeah, Alicia, I saw that too. So are those legal fees, it didn't have what we're, they're currently charging. Yeah, I asked that. I said, can you please give me what you're right. currently charging so that way I could do an analysis. Yeah. Yeah. They said they haven't changed them since 2017, and they usually change them every three years. But because of the pandemic, we've gotten to enjoy it a little longer than three. Yeah. So now they're upping their legal fees. I got into the wrong business, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> On the senior center, do we have a feel for whether you know there's like increased services leading to increased staffing as part of that, or is it kind of a level staffing, you know, just new facility? Thing or too early that i would leave to liz i'm not sure to be honest with you tyler yeah the only thing i saw was that they put in um an additional social worker but i don't know if that's um that's needed regardless of a new facility or not so uh, yeah i'm thinking more when it's done sean like okay the building's done and we're gonna do all this cool new stuff yeah say so, yeah probably the same costume for park and rec in a few years right i mean you right know, Make sure the lifeguard costs and whatever else are just all part of the picture we pay for the town. Excellent. All right, so in the next slide, it's just showing our meetings coming up on the 18th, the 25th, February 5th, all going to be at the police station. And then our May 2022 to be determined annual town meeting on the budget. Uh, thank you. And any questions? Nice job, Alicia. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Sure is. Especially when everybody's been sick. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible timing. <laughs> uh, all right. There, nothing? And no questions? I, everybody seems to be pretty comfortable with the, the 18th to 25th. Um, it, it was moved, like I mentioned earlier, to the police station at the request of the chairman of the select board more space it sounds like there um it will be 
the, the the night ones will definitely be hybrid the uh 15th the 18th and the 25th so you know with the pandemic it, if, if people aren't comfortable coming in yet and being um in, a, in that type of a group then um by all means come you know get in hybrid and we can st still make it work uh this is really this what this is about is just giving the the department heads the opportunity to meet with us and the select board once a year some of these guys in in and um, never get a chance to even, <laughs> you know, speak to us or know who we are. So I think it's important for some of them um, and also for us to be able to ask questions specifically to things that they bring up. So um, that's the important part as far as the hybrid thing that that's not as important. Um, Saturday, I, I, I do believe it, it should be, if at all possible in person, um, especially the second half of that meeting where we're <coughs> trying to, leave that Saturday um, so Alicia and Sean and the team can walk out and be done, <laughs> pretty much done, right? Um, that's the goal. So um, other than that, I'm, you know, anybody else have any suge other suggestions? This is something that we, we started just a couple of years ago, I believe, uh, those that were around, Greg, <laughs> for sure, and Tom. Uh, Steve was also a part of this. So we used to uh, Super Sata used to just be that. All the department set heads would come in, and it was just like a herding cattle. <laughs> so I think now it's a it's a little bit more meaningful. We we have a little bit more time, and we're not as rushed. So, but this can change, and I think it, it, if it, always looking for ideas, change it for the better. So definitely, Gary. I think this layout's probably the best because you're breaking it up. Um, I. I believe Paul Glavy started this with being the super Saturday and it, it just felt long to me. Right. I mean, you get to three o'clock in the afternoon and just, it's like revolving door. Just people just keep walking in, you know, um, That's why I know. always went last Greg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, you, you got it, Steve, you know, <laughs> it's all yours. Whereas <laughs> it's exhausted, but I like the approach here where, you know, we're taking the major departments that have, you know, typically the most capital and, you know, the most budget um, and bringing them in on Saturday and having all the smaller ones that may have minor needs and requests that we can knock off on a couple of different nights. So I, I love this approach. I think it's the right way to go. Okay. Well, good. Um, all right. Let's move on. Thank you, Alicia and Sean. Um, I don't think, did we receive minutes for the last meeting? I don't believe we did yet. Or did we already approve the last minutes? I think we did. So I, we can skip that. Um, do we have any um, other input outside of what was discussed here tonight? Anything going on? I did get that um, the Gog Hill Orchard transfer, reserve fund transfer request that was approved. Okay. Um, I got it signed from Anthony, so I'll be forwarding that off. So our next joint meeting, we can go over reserve fund transfer for, for that. Okay, that just to get everybody kind of, I, I got brought into that one a little bit late. So as you know, there's a steering committee for, the, for NAGOG Orchard that was developed, I believe, um, to kind of get ahead of this and find an orchardist um, and get that orchard back to functioning or, or, or on the way to functioning. So um, with that, um, they are requesting, I, I, I believe it's about 35,000. It's broken Correct. up into a few different things um, for the pruning of all of those trees, try to get ahead of it in the spring where we don't have someone taking over the orchard. At least we can hire um, a pruning company to come in and prune these trees that know how to prune apple trees. So that that's just another thing we don't have to worry about, and 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 some other things that are on that. So that was uh, something I saw coming, and uh, I, I think it's. I, I let Alicia know that it is. We're going to be meeting several times with the select board uh, this over the next few weeks, so we can knock that out at, at, ahead of one of those meetings, maybe first agenda item before we meet with someone. So, but that's something to. Um, I, Alicia, if you can, you have the, the actual requested, uh, is that already? Yeah, they, yeah, I just got it today. It was approved by the select board on the 10th. Okay, yes. you met, that's right. Cause they met yesterday, the actual 
Orchard uh, Committee met with the select board last night and talked about this. So they're aware of it. So if you could forward that request to the board so everybody can see it. So Absolutely. we're ready. The next. Anything else? Carrie, we did get minutes uh, from Maryland for the 28th. Okay. We got them. Uh, I, I have no issues with them. If you want to make point me to make a motion. Yeah, go ahead. You, if you'd like to make a motion and then. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the minutes from uh, our meeting on 1228 as okay. written. All right. Looking for a second. <laughs> second. You're comfortable. All right. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Um, well, if you feel like you have to abstain, if you weren't there or you aren't familiar with the minutes, please do. Um, Jerry. Um, yes, I was just refreshing my memory looking at them, but I did read them. Yes. Um, Greg. Yes. Yes. Steve. Yep. Tyler. Ah, uh, yeah. Tom. Yes. You. Al. And I did get these, so she's sending them to me now. Okay. Are you a yes? Or <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I'm a yes. So thank you for that. <laughs> um. All right. Without any other updates, or nobody has anything else going on, there is a there is an MMA conference this month. Um, so far, we I hope it's going to happen. Um, I believe it's the twenty first and twenty second um, of the month. And like I said in the last meeting, I'm scheduled uh, to go, and I know Tom is scheduled to go, and I know if members of the team, Sean and Alicia, were you okay? Um, so I'm feeling a little invulnerable since I survived COVID over Christmas. So I should be good to go, right? That's my second bout. Um, but um, hopefully we, we come out of there with some, uh, you know, I always come out of there with a little bit of extra knowledge. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. Um, but as always, uh, any, any classes, Alicia, that you see or Sean, you see that would help our board members whether it's a conference, a two hour, one hour during a week, it, you know, something we can go to, please share it with us so we can keep our, keep our board moving forward with some of the new, new stuff happening, especially with the pandemic. Excellent. Anybody else? I just have a question, Gary. I haven't been to the police station conference room. Do we just go in the main entrance and yeah, they'll direct go us? The or? Left. Yep, go right in and then to the left. Um, okay. It's a conference room. Do you have to check in though when you go in, or are you just no, no, no? They're aware. They're they're well aware. They have the they know exactly who's coming in and everything. And LCTV will actually be there as well, so they're <laughs> setting setting up. So it should be good. Gary, uh, I've never been either, so I asked Judy to take me at one o'clock on Friday. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's a shame. Well, that, I don't know. It's probably a good thing you've never been to the police station, guys. <laughs> I've been to the police station, but not that room. Oh. <laughs> well, we should, you just take a left. You're all set. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Don't. Yeah. Just come in and, and go to the left and everybody will be in there. We'll have the table set up uh, so all board members can kind of be on one side, um, which I've been pushing for forever. The pandemic kind of hurt that, but. Um, so we can have the presenters in front of us all. It's just a little more conducive to conversation than being mixed in the, uh, <laughs> in the audience. So uh, that's all I have. So look for a motion. I did ask Diane to um, order nameplate for Steve, Al, and myself for the oh, meeting. Thank you. Does anybody else remember not having a nameplate? I know it's just Al, Steve, obviously, and you. Jerry, you had one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's it, Alicia. That should be everybody. Thank you. All right. That's all I have. I'll look for a motion. So moved. <laughs> so, I I'm not even going to say what it is, but I'm just so <laughs> moving it. Motion for dinner. It's been moved and seconded, and we're right at just over an hour, so that's pretty good. Um, moved and seconded. I'll go around. Jerry. Yes. Greg. Yes. Steve. Yep. Tyler. Yes. Thomas. Yes. 
Al. Yes. And I'm a yes. All right, everybody have a wonderful night. And thank you for your time. And thank you, Alicia and Sean. Thank you.